Hello, so from today onwards, I will be discussing cost and management accounting, which is the second part of your advanced level paper. As you know, advanced level paper consists of two parts, mainly financial accounting and management accounting. So when we talk about management accounting, we cannot know cost accounting. So therefore, cost and management accounting, we need to study together. So in this presentation, this is the first presentation uh, to cover cost and management accounting aspects. So here I will be covering the introduction to cost and management accounting. Thereafter, we can move into other areas. So in this first presentation, I will be discussing the differences between financial accounting and management accounting, various definitions that we have been using, and so on and so forth. So to start my presentation, let's go through from the beginning. Introduction. So the introduction to accounting, as we know, this definition is not new to you. All of you are aware of this definition. All of you know what accounting is, the process of accounting, all of you are aware. Accounting is a process which starts with recording of transactions. So you first record transactions, you classify the transactions into assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses. And thereafter you prepare various financial statements. So this is the process of accounting in a nutshell. So this you know. But the most important thing that you need to understand is who are asked to prepare financial statements, transactions have to happen in monetary terms. In other words, if something happens in monetary terms only, we can record in accounting. So, as it says, accounting is a wide term and it includes recording, classifying, and summarizing of business transactions in terms of money. Very important. Transactions have to happen in terms of money. So, preparation of financial reports. An analysis and interpretation of these reports for the information and guidance of management. So basically, we prepare financial statements and based on the financial statements, we give information for various users to make decisions. The business accounting system consists of three parts, financial accounting, cost accounting and management accounting. So basically, there are three categories, financial accounting, cost accounting, management accounting, but cost accounting and management accounting we study together. Therefore, we say, it is financial accounting and cost and management accounting. So I have also pulled cost accounting and management accounting together and we are going to call it as cost and management accounting. It is management accounting. It is the information system through which you give information for various individuals to make decisions. But in order to provide this information, you make use of the cost accounting information. So financial accounting. I will read the definition given here. Financial accounting may be defined as the science and art of systematically recording, classifying, and summarizing business transactions of financial character, and finally interpreting the results for determining the financial profit or loss at the end of an accounting year. So, as I have explained earlier, it is here we record transactions, we classify transactions, and we summarize transactions in order to generate information. It is important for users to make decisions pertaining to the financial accounting function of an organization. So basically, as the definition says, it is the system of recording, classifying, and summarizing business transactions of financial character. So as I have explained earlier, these things should happen. Transactions should happen, or the things should be recorded only and only if those happen financially. So it is very important they have the financial character. And finally, interpreting the results of uh, interpreting the results for determining the financial profit or loss. So basically, after recording, after classifying, and through various financial statements, we present the financial profit or loss. In other words, basically what has happened in the past. It also shows the financial position of the firm and thus records and reports financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, and the statement of cash flow. So in addition to the profit or loss, financial accounting will also give you information about the financial position. Uh, when we say financial position, it is equivalent to the financial performance. When we say financial performance, we talk about how a company has fared or how a company has performed during a past period. When we say about financial position, we talk about the values of assets, liabilities, and capital at the end of a particular day. So there's a difference between the financial position and the financial performance. Financial position is reflected by the balance sheet. Or the statement of financial position. Financial performance is reflected by income statement and the comprehensive statement. So basically, these are the financial statement reports, uh, PNL or the income statement, including the uh, comprehensive statement, the statement of financial position, and the cash flow statement. 
So what is cost accounting? Cost accounting is that branch of the accounting information system which records measures and reports information about cost. So basically, what cost accounting does is cost accounting calculates cost. Cost accounting calculates cost of various processes. The primary purpose of cost accounting is cost ascertainment and it's used in decision making and performance evaluation. So basically, from cost accounting, we calculate cost. We ascertain cost in order to use those information to make decisions. So cost accounting meaning. Cost accounting is concerned with recording, classifying, and appropriate allocation of expenditure for the determination of the cost of products and services and for the suitably arranged data for purposes of control and guidance of information the management for decision making. So basically, in cost accounting, these are the things you need to understand. Cost accounting will give you information about cost of various products as well as services so that you will know exactly how much it will cost to produce something or to provide a service. And also using this information, you can make various decisions. Also, you can control various processes and also various divisions and organizations. So I'll repeat the definition again. Cost accounting is concerned with recording, classifying, and appropriate allocation of expenditure for the determination of cost of products or services and for the suitably arranged data for purposes of control and guidance of information management for decision making. So basically, cost accounting gives you details about cost of products as well as services. Cost accounting will help you to make decisions and also cost accounting information will help you to make various comparisons and to control cost in cost means the price paid for something cost ascertainment is the calculation of actual cost incurred cost estimation is the process of predetermining cost for so three different terms cost means the price paid for something cost ascertainment is determination of actual cost incurred cost estimation is predetermination of cost of goods and services so uh, remember the differences between the three terms. Cost is the price paid for something. Now, say for example, uh, I can say, okay, it cost me 10 rupees to purchase a pen. So if I say it cost me 10 rupees to purchase a pen, it means, on the other hand, selling price of the seller. Cost ascertainment is determination of the actual cost incurred. Cost estimation is the predetermination of the good, uh, cost of goods and services. So basically, three different terms relating to cost. Now let's look at objectives of cost accounting. Estimation of cost, this we have discussed. Estimation of cost, ascertainment of cost, cost control, cost reduction, determination of selling price, facilitating preparation of financial and other statements, and providing a basis for operating policy. So basically, I mean, these are known things. Why we need to have cost accounting? What are the objectives of cost accounting? We need to estimate the cost. We need to predetermine the cost. We need to ascertain the actual cost. As we have discussed, we need to control cost. In certain cases, we need to reduce cost. We need to have cost information to set our selling prices, to determine the selling prices, facilitating preparation of financial and other statements. We need cost accounting information to prepare financial statements and providing a basis for operating policy. In other words, if you know the cost of uh, producing a good or cost of providing a service, or if you know the cost of operating various divisions, you can use those information in order to have better control over the operations in an organization. So these are some of the objectives of cost account. So elements of cost, very important to understand different elements of cost. Broadly, what you need to understand is there are three elements of cost. So the three elements are called as materials, labor and expenses. Now, each of these three elements have a direct component as well as an indirect component. 
So basically we have materials, labor and expenses. Each of these elements have two components called direct as well as indirect. So now we will have direct materials, indirect materials, direct labor, indirect labor, direct expenses as well as indirect expenses. So the three elements of course, we have now expanded into six elements. Totally understand there are three elements, materials, labor and expenses. Each of these elements have two components called direct and indirect. So altogether we have six elements. So if you take this indirect parts, indirect materials, indirect labor, indirect expenses, these three indirect uh, components together we call as overheads. In other words, overheads are indirect materials, indirect labor and indirect expenses together. Another name for all indirect costs, another name for all indirect costs is overheads. And overheads, as you know, overheads can be incurred in production department, overheads can be incurred in administration departments, or overheads can be incurred in selling and distribution departments. So if overheads are incurred in the production department, we call them as production overheads. If overheads are incurred in the administration departments, we call them as administration overheads. If overheads are incurred in the selling and distribution department, we call them as selling and distribution overheads. So basically, this is the structure of let me explain it again. There are three broad elements of cost, materials, labor, and expenses. Each of these elements have two components, direct and indirect. Part. So we have direct materials, indirect materials, direct labor, indirect labor, direct expenses, indirect expenses. The three indirect parts together we call as overheads. And overheads can be incurred in various departments. Sometimes we incur overheads in production departments. If it is so, we call them as production overheads. Sometimes overheads can be incurred in administration departments. We call those overheads as administration overheads. And if overheads are incurred in selling and distribution departments, we call them as selling and distribution overheads. So broadly speaking, this is the structure of cost. So very important that you remember this slide where we discuss elements of cost. Later on, we can discuss individual elements in detail, but uh, as a snapshot, as a snapshot or as a summary, you can remember this slide. Basically, it discusses, basically, it summarizes all elements of cost. So, what are materials? Materials are the substances from which the finished product is made. Materials are basically substances or ingredients from which we manufacture something. Now, as you know, there are two kinds of materials direct materials as well as indirect materials. So, what are direct materials? Direct material is one which can be directly or easily identified in product. So, these are the materials which you can easily identify in a particular product. In other words, as soon as you see a particular product, you can identify these materials in it. So what are these materials? What are the examples for direct materials? Timber in furniture. Now say for example, as soon as you see a furniture, you can identify timber in it. So timber in furniture is a direct material. Cloth in, in a dress. So as soon as you see a dress, you know it is made out of fabric. So fabric or clothes that you have used to manufacture a dress is a direct material. So then what are indirect materials? These are also substances. Very important to understand indirect materials are also ingredients or substances. These are the materials which cannot be easily identified in a product. For example, disposable safety equipment. When you manufacture, you may be using safety equipment, but you cannot directly see those equipments in the product itself. Things like glue, tape, oil, etc. You may be using this. These are materials, but you cannot see these materials in the product. So these are indirect materials. So very important to understand the difference between direct materials and indirect materials. Direct materials are the materials which you can clearly see. Indirect materials are the materials which you can't see, although those are used in the manufacturing of the product or provision of the service. So examples for indirect materials are things like safety equipment, disposable safety equipment, you will use those and you will dispose. Things like glue, tape, oil, etc. You may be using those, but as soon as you as soon as you see the product, you might not be in a position to identify these materials, unlike direct materials. So labor. The human effort required to convert the materials into finished product is called labor. We know basically we need labor. We need labor in order to convert materials into finished product. Again, we have two types of labor, direct labor as well as indirect labor. So what do you mean by direct labor? 
this is this is the one which can be conveniently identified or attributed wholly to a particular job product or a process example wages paid to a carpenter fees paid to a tailor etc so like direct materials direct labor are the wages paid to workers which you can directly identify in the particular product or in a particular process now say for example if you are manufacturing if you are manufacturing something then the wages that you are paying for the factory workers is a direct wages direct labor cost because factory workers are directly involved in the manufacturing of the product if you pay a wage if you pay a wage or if you pay wages to those employees then the wages that you are paying to those employees will be categorized as a direct labor cost so what is indirect labor then indirect labor is one which cannot be conveniently identified or attributed only to a particular job product or process so example foreman salary a supervisor salary gatekeeper salary now these are what these are again salaries these are again salaries be careful i mean whether it is direct labor or indirect labor we refer to salaries basically so indirect labor is also salaries but these are salaries paid not for direct workers but for indirect workers so who are indirect workers workers who are not directly involved in the production people like supervisors so if you take the role of a supervisor a supervisor is supervising the work of employees a supervisor is supervising the work of workers so workers may be working they are working hard to manufacture a particular product a supervisor is there to supervise their work so supervisor is not a direct worker he is an indirect worker so if you pay a salary to a supervisor the salary that you are paying to the supervisor you cannot take as a direct wage or you cannot take as a direct salary cost you have to take it as a indirect salary cost so expenses so remember in that slide i was explaining about three elements of cost material labor and expenses so the, this is the third element expenses these are expenses other than material and labor so again there are two parts direct expenses and indirect expenses so what are direct expenses these are expenses which can be directly allocated to a particular job process or product example excise duty royal royalty special hiring charges etc so these are basically expenses that you are incurring which you can directly allocate to a particular product or process now say for example if you pay excise duty you pay excise duty let's say for liquor now with regard to liquor you can identify excise duty you pay a royalty if you manufacture a particular product now say for example another person has manufactured something he has another person has invented something he has taken a patent and you are paying him a royalty Uh, for every unit that you manufacture and sell, I'll say for example, the product belongs to that person. He has taken the patent, and you are also manufacturing. But for each unit that you manufacture, you have to pay him the payment. Now that payment is called as a royalty payment. So royalty payment is a direct expense. Special hiring charges. Now say for example, for your production, you wanted to hire a machine. Without that machine, you can't do production. So that machine hire is a direct expense because you need that machine. in order to do the production so these are direct expenses in other words these are expenses which you can directly identify with the product or the process so what are indirect expenses everything else all other expenses are indirect expenses so things like electricity utility uh, depreciation all those expenses are indirect expenses so i repeat again expenses when you say expenses as broadly expenses mean a uh, cost other than material cost as well as labor cost so again there are two types direct expenses as well as indirect expenses when you say direct expenses you refer to the expenses which you can directly identify with a particular product or a, uh, with a particular product or a process such as excise duty a royalty payment machine hiring charge etc so these are expenses which you directly incur for a particular product or a process therefore you call them as direct expenses these are not material cost these are not labor cost but these are other expenses which are directly incurred for the production or for the process that is why we call them as direct expenses expenses yes these are not materials these are not labor these are other expenses but these are directly incurred excise payment directly incurred royalty payment directly incurred machine hiring charge for the production directly incurred so that is why we call them as 
direct expenses i hope it is clear so what are indirect expenses everything else everything else other than materials other than labor other than direct expenses if there are other expenses such as electricity utility bills water bills depreciation etc all those expenses we can identify as indirect expense so let's now look at examples examples of other expenses so at the factory level as i have mentioned you may have factory rent insurance lighting etc at office level you might have office rent office insurance office lighting at sales and distribution level it may be advertising cost showroom expenses like rent insurance etc so these other expenses you might incur at various levels at the factory level at the office level or at the sales and distribution level another important classification of cost fixed variable and semi variable cost so what do you mean by fixed cost these are expenses which do not alter i will first read the definition these are expenses which do not alter in the short run in relation to changes in output so fixed cost are expenses which which will not alter or which will not change in the short run very important short run is a short time duration so these are expenses which will not change in the short time duration even if volume changes so volume might change volume might either increase or decrease but during the short run fixed cost might not change so what are the examples for fixed cost things like rent insurance depreciation these costs are linked to time very important fixed cost normally we call as period cost why we say period cost because this will change in the long run not in the short run these costs are linked to the time rather than the level of business activity in other words in the short run this cost will not change even if the volume changes on the other hand what do you mean by variable cost these are expenses which alter in the short run to change the sin output so in the short run when volume changes these expenses will change so expenses like materials expenses like direct labor now those expenses will change in the short run even in the short run when volume either increases or decreases so if the volume is increasing variable cost will increase if the volume is decreasing variable cost will decrease now what are semi variable cost now these are hybrid cost these are cost of which you have variable element as well as a fixed element in other words in semi variable cost you have both variable elements as well as fixed elements so i can give you uh, some examples for semi variable cost semi variable cost would be most of the utility bills now, even if you take an electricity bill an electricity bill will have a fixed charge and if you exceed if you exceed the consumption beyond that then there will be a variable charge similarly telephone it might have a fixed charge and if it exceeds then you will have a variable charge the water bill you have a fixed charge first and if the consumption exceeds the minimum amount then for the additional consumption you will be charging additionally so these are semi variable costs what you need to understand is in semi variable cost you have a fixed component as well as a variable component so these are expenses which vary with output but not in direct proportion so they often comprise a fixed element and a variable element let me uh, for you to understand the uh, relationship between direct cost indirect cost variable cost and fixed cost let me explain you the summary in a separate document right i hope this is let's say i hope the excel worksheet is visible to all of you yes okay so if the excel worksheet is visible now let me summarize what we have discussed up to this point so, so basically there are three elements of cost as you know materials labor and expenses and for each element there are two components material labor and expenses have two components each have two components each called direct and indirect so we know our total direct cost when we say total direct cost we talk about direct materials
direct label. And direct expenses. So these are the total direct cost, direct, direct materials, direct labor, and direct expenses. So total indirect cost, total indirect cost, indirect materials, indirect labor, and indirect expenses. Indirect expenses. So, total indirect costs are also called as overheads. Total indirect costs are also called as overheads. Also, we know overheads can be incurred. Overheads can be incurred in the reduction department. The reduction department. office or in the sales and distribution department so depending on where overheads are incurred we have different types of overheads sometimes we have production overheads sometimes we have office overheads sometimes we have selling and distribution overheads now this is clear now we let's come to variable cost we know variable costs are the costs that vary with the volume in the short run. So variable costs include total direct cost. Variable cost is a broader term than the direct cost. So variable cost includes total direct cost plus variable part of overheads, variable overheads. Now, very important, I told you earlier, first, we can broadly categorize into material, labor, and expenses, and each of these have two components called direct and indirect. So we have total direct cost and total indirect cost. Total direct cost are direct materials, direct labor, direct expenses. Total indirect cost are indirect materials, indirect labor, and indirect expenses. So now I am saying variable cost is a broader definition than direct cost because variable cost includes total direct cost and a part of the overheads. Now, which part of the overhead? Variable overheads. So therefore, variable cost equals total direct cost and variable overheads. So I can say variable cost is a broader term. It's a broader term than total direct cost. Than total direct cost. Variable cost includes variable cost includes total direct cost. Total direct cost and variable overheads so basically this is the summary variable overheads right so now i'll go back to the presentation right so meaning of management accounting i told you earlier management accounting and post accounting are closely linked we how to get the information from cost accounting in order to prepare various reports under management accounting. So cost accounting and management accounting are very closely linked. Management accounting involves furnishing of the accounting data to the management in such a way that it facilitates the decision making and improves the efficiency within the organization and finally helps in achieving the goals of the organization. So basically in management accounting what happens is we give information to management to make effective decisions in order to improve the organization and for the organization to achieve the overall objectives. So basically, this is what happens in management accounting. Basically, to understand in management accounting, the main user, the main user is an internal party. In other words, from management accounting, we give information mainly to internal users, which we normally call as management. So definitions of management accounting. I have listed here two definitions. According to American Accounting Association, management accounting includes the methods and concepts necessary for control through the evaluation and interpretation of performances. So, American Accounting Association defines management accounting as a system which includes concepts necessary to control as well as to evaluate uh, performances of divisions through interpretation. So, accounting is concerned with 
accounting is concerned with. Uh, there's a small mistake here in this definition. And take off this part that is actually not necessary. We can take off this. According to American Accounting Association, management accounting includes the methods and concepts necessary uh, for control through the evaluation and interpretation of performances. Basically, as uh, I have explained earlier, what this association says is management accounting consists of various methods and concepts through which we can evaluate the performances and interpret these results in order to improve the performances in the future. Now, Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, SEMA UK. You may have heard SEMA UK, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, they define management accounting as the process through which we provide information to management to enable them to make effective decisions. So, it is a process. It is a process through which we give information to management because management makes decisions. We give information to management for them to make effective decisions. That is how SEMA UK defines management accounting, although it is not listed here. So objectives of management accounting. So what are the objectives of management accounting? Helpful in planning and policy formation that we know forecasting, setting goals, framing policies on the basis of available information. So, management accounting information we can use to plan, plan the activities and also to develop the policies. Helps in decision making, that we know. Management accounting gives information to management to make decisions. Makes decisions on aspects such as cost, price, profit, as well as savings. Helpful in controlling, that also we know. We can use management accounting information to compare and control. Management accounting devices like standard costing and budgetary controls are helpful in controlling performance. We can set standards, we can have budgets. Thereafter, we can compare the actual performance with the standard as well as with the budget in order to control the uh, operations and also to control the expenses. Motivating employees. Now, cost accounting information or the management accounting information can be used to motivate employees. How can you motivate employees? Basically, you can set targets, and if employees achieve these targets, you can use that information. In other words, you will use management accounting to evaluate the performance of divisions as well as managers. Then, if they have achieved the given targets, then you can reward them uh, adequately. So, basically, management accounting information you can use to motivate employees. Delegating delegation increases the job satisfaction of employees and encourages them to look forward. Provides accounting information to management that we know. So the differences between management accounting and financial accounting, what are the differences between these two? Structure. So in management accounting, there is no proper structure. It varies. In other words, the structure depends on the information requirement of the user. If a particular person wants a particular report in a particular way, then of course you have to give the report in that particular way. But in financial accounting, we know. There are specified formats. So if, if, a, if a specified format is there, if a specified format is there, you need to prepare the financial statements based on that format. But in management accounting, there are no hard or fast rules. There are no hard and fast rules. So basically, you can give information based on information needs of the users. Sources of principle, source, source of information. So basically, in management accounting, Whatever is useful to management. So information source can be whatever. But in financial accounting, it has to be based on generally accepted accounting principles. Need. Management accounting needs are optional. In other words, a particular person might want, let's say for example, the CEO, CEO or the chairman of an organization, he might need a particular information in one format today, but some other information in a different format tomorrow. So, needs are optional in management accounting, but in financial accounting, there's a statutory obligation. The statutory obligation to prepare financial statements as the generally accepted accounting principles. Time orientation. In management accounting, basically we present information about today and about future. 
So basically, in management accounting, remember, we give information about what is happening today and also about future. But in financial accounting, basically, we give information about what happened in the past. So reporting entity. Reporting entity. In management accounting, we can present information for various responsibility centers. A responsibility center is a center or a division that is responsible to achieve a particular performance target. So when we present information in management accounting, we can give information by responsibility centers. But in financial accounting, we prepare the income statement balance sheet for the entire organization. For reporting entity, in management accounting, we can uh, present information for different divisions or for different cost centers or profit centers. But in financial accounting, we need to prepare everything in the sense the total set of financial statements for the entire organization. Purpose. A means to the end of assisting management. In management accounting, basically, objective is to help management. Objective is to help management. In financial accounting, objective is to provide information to various users outside the organization. External reporting statements for outside use. Users, as I have explained earlier, basically in management accounting, you give information for internal users to management. But in financial accounting, you give information to people outside. They are not known to you. Information content. Management accounting information consists not only financial information but also non-financial information. So when we say non-financial information, these are also measurable. But this may not be financial. But in financial accounting, everything we present financial. Primarily monetary. Information precision. In management accounting, we can assume certain things. In other words, we can do various approximations, but in financial accounting, we can't do much approximations. In other words, there are very few approximations allowed in financial accounting. Report frequency. Report frequency can define management accounting. A person might want a particular report sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, sometimes quarterly, but in financial accounting, you have to prepare information, you have to prepare financial statements for specified periods, maybe quarterly, biannually, annually, etc. Timeliness, report timeliness. In management accounting, you have to issue reports promptly. You have to issue reports promptly after end of the period covered. Since you are giving information to management, since you are giving information to management to help them to make decisions, you need to give information on a timely manner. In other words, if you delay giving information, then of course that information might become stale. People might not have much of a benefit of using that information. But in financial accounting, information can be delayed because in financial accounting, information has to be presented or prepared before certain periods, let's say quarterly, biannually, etc. So before the end of the quarter, you have to give the information. Before the end of six months, you have to give certain information. So the, of course, there's a time delay, there's an allowed time delay in financial accounting. The same advantage is not in management accounting. You issue reports promptly. Liability potential. Liability potential, of course, if you do not give information to the person who's asking the information, mainly your supervisor, mainly your supervisor, mainly your manager. So then I'll say, for example, in management accounting, if your manager asks for a particular information, which you are unable to give on time. So management might take disciplinary action. Management might take internal actions against you. In financial accounting, if you don't present information, if you don't present information uh, for the shareholders before the end of specified periods, that is legally punishable. That is legally punishable. So these are some of the differences between management accounting and the financial accounting. So basically, this is the introduction to cost and management accounting. Here I have discussed different elements of cost between direct cost, indirect cost, and also uh, taking the classification based on variable and fixed cost. Thereafter, I have defined management accounting, I have discussed the differences between management accounting and financial accounting. So with this, I'm going to finish the first presentation or the introductory presentation on cost and management accounting. So if you have any questions, now you can please ask from me so we can discuss. We can have a few, uh, few more minutes in order to discuss whatever the questions that you may be having. So it's open to you, you can ask any questions. If this presentation is clear, then maybe we can call it a day.
So is it clear? So if I go back from the beginning, we define financial accounting. It is the process of recording, classifying, summarizing information about a business. And basically, uh, when we record transactions in financial accounting, we record transactions using a particular currency. In other words, basically, transactions as well as events should it, uh, should take place uh, so that we can measure the effects using financial figures. So it is very important, whatever the transactions or events that are happening, that we record under financial accounting happen in rupees and cents. In other words, they should have the financial character. So basically, in financial accounting, we prepare certain reports. Uh, in, we prepare an income statement, which we normally call as the profit, profit order statement. We prepare the balance sheet, in other words, statement of financial position, and also the cash flow statement for the main financial statements. In cost accounting, basically, we calculate cost, uh, cost information about a particular product or a service. So in costing, of course, there are certain terms that you need to be familiar with, such as cost, cost ascertainment, as well as cost estimation. So cost means the price. My cost is the price of someone else. Cost ascertainment is the determination of the actual cost incurred. Cost estimation is the predetermination of cost of various products or services. Then objectives of cost accounting, estimation of cost, ascertainment of cost, cost controlling, cost reduction, determining selling prices, all these we have discussed. Providing information to prepare financial statements and also to provide information to set the operating policies. These are some of the objectives of cost accounting. Different elements of cost, basically as material labor expenses, then each element we can categorize into two, direct and indirect. So we have three direct costs, direct materials, direct labor, direct expenses, three indirect costs, indirect materials, indirect labor, indirect expenses, all indirect costs we call as overheads. Overheads can take place in various departments, production department, in the say administration departments, or in the selling and distribution departments. So depending on where overheads are incurred, we can have three types of overheads, production overheads, administration overheads, and selling and distribution overheads. So materials are the things or materials are the ingredients or substances which we can see. So there can be two types of materials, direct materials as well as direct materials. So direct materials are the materials which we can clearly see, such as timber and furniture. Indirect materials are the materials which we are using but we can't see the product. So things like oil, uh, tape, glue, uh, then uh, disposable safety equipment, etc. Then labor, again, the cost of people involved in the production of a particular product or provisioning of a service. So here again, we have two types of labor, direct labor and direct labor. Direct labor is the greatest cost of employees who are directly involved in the production of the product, such as the wages that we are paying to factory workers. Indirect, indirect labor is the salary cost of those employees who are not directly involved, such as salary cost of supervisors who are not directly involved in production, but who are just supervising the work of the others. Then we have expenses, which means expenses other than materials and labor. There again, we have two expenses, direct other expenses and indirect other expenses. So direct other expenses are expenses which are directly incurred for the reduction or for the provisioning of a service, such as hiring of a machine, paying excise duty, paying a royalty, etc. So apart from other direct costs, we have other indirect costs, such as utility bills, uh, utility bills, electricity bills, etc, etc. So rent, insurance, all those are the indirect expenses. So examples of other expenses at factory level, at office level, at sales and at sales and distribution level, you can see you can you may you may have same expenses at different different levels at factory level, at office level, or at the sales and distribution level. So then we move into the discussion of fixed variable as well as semi-variable cost. So fixed cost are the cost that will not change in the short run, irrespective of the changes in volume. Variable cost are the cost that will change in the short run when volume changes. Semi-variable cost have the characteristics of both fixed as well as variable cost. So broadly, semi-variable cost are utility costs. Utility costs such as electricity bill, water bill, telephone bill, etc. 
then we came to management accounting we defined management accounting we looked at two definitions of management accounting the definition given by american accounting association it's a it's a process whereby which we determine the performances we determine the performances of various products as well as process and interpret these performances to control the operations so maxim started list of management accounting they defined management accounting as the process through which we provide information for various users to make effective decisions so objectives of management accounting we have looked at objectives to plan and to set our policies to make decisions for controlling purposes i mean most of these objectives are similar to objectives in cost accounting to motivate employees and to provide information for decision making then finally we looked at differences between financial accounting and management accounting so basically that is our topic today so i cannot see any questions being asked so with that so since it is understood is this, is that clear yes thank you so since it is understood so i'm going to wind up today's presentation which is about the introduction to cost accounting and management accounting right and one more thing before i wind up so not for a level 2020 now for a level 2020 as i promised i'll be doing these lectures uh, freely for you to access through youtube and if you want i can email these lectures for you to download and view now for next year for 2021 and for 2022 i'll be starting online classes i'll be starting online classes to cover theory past papers as well as model papers through a virtual classroom so in the virtual classroom basically i'm going to provide these facilities for the students who will be registering i'll be giving them a personal login there will be personal student login each student will be given a separate login using which they can log into the system this will, this will act like a moodle uh, where they can only view certain materials they can only view certain lectures nobody else uh, can enter into the moodle using Uh, a particular student's login, unless of course that student has shared it. So basically, this login is given specifically for a student, for him to uh, download, download, and also for him to access various materials through the virtual classroom. So personal student login is a feature that I will be giving uh, to the virtual classroom. I will be creating a portal, Moodle, and for all the students who will be registering, I am giving a personal login. so there will be a virtual classroom there will be discussion of topics like what we are doing now so in the virtual classroom i will be using a whiteboard and also like i am doing now i am sharing my screen there will be online ass uh, assessments online assignments at the end of each chapter i will be giving assessments i will be giving assignments and both assignments and assessments will be auto marked by the system you can see your marks and you can have self confidence before you come to the next class for the next chapter because the system will auto correct your answers so then activity log so this is actually uh, to give information now say for example if a particular parent asks whether a particular student has come to a class uh, this is actually a way of checking that so there will be student activity log uh, which will record of course your attendance as well as the lectures that you have attended the materials that you have downloaded how, how, how many times that you have let's say viewed certain materials etc so there will be a student activity log and of course if you have any doubts you will be able to message 24 by 7 so in addition to live lectures in addition to live virtual lectures like what we are doing now there will be some pre recorded lectures that will be given to you free of charge uh, as a mean of improving your knowledge as a mean of improving your knowledge in various subject area so my name is mr perera and as i told you uh, i am i have many qualifications but primarily i am a cma uh, a cma accountant a certified management accountant uh i was explaining about the cma qualification in my previous uh, videos also cma is a, a professional management accounting qualification an institute established in sri lanka to a parliament act so it's a very good qualification so like uh, like i have described earlier and i am telling you again uh, if you want to uh, do further studies if you want to do further studies 
even if you go to the university even if you are unable to go to the university even if you want to start a startup for him a professional program a cma is a professional program which you can start before you attempt any of those other roads in other words even if you decide to go to the university you can uh, follow your university degree while uh, going through the cma lectures in other words you can complete the cma program as well as the university degree at the same time also with the cma qualification you can get exemptions from many other foreign professional uh, qualifications so first do cma as a professional i am telling you first do cma with the cma qualification you can open doors for many other avenues you can open doors for many uh, foreign mba programs many foreign educational uh, opportunities including getting exemptions from foreign accounting bodies right so with that with this small note i'm going to wind up today's session and thank you very much for all of you who have joined today